Welcome back to the top 10 strike force knockouts and on to two middleweights, both known for their heavy hands. When Joe Diesel Riggs matched up against veteran fighter Eugene Jackson, the chances were pretty high. Someone would end up winning this fight with a KO. The question was, which guy? Here is knockout number seven. We pick it up early in the first round where Riggs already had Jackson in a heap of trouble. Joe Diesel Riggs on top of Eugene Jackson, and he is just smothering Jackson right now, Ken. Well, right now, he's basically got uh, Eugene Jackson's arms trapped between his legs, and the other one he's got trapped in his shoulder, and he's just raining down blows on his face. And it's from there, he, Eugene on the bottom there cannot protect himself. He doesn't have any hands to do that. With Riggs so high on Jackson's body, Jackson having trouble getting any kind of swing motion. Well, look, he's posturing up, and he's going, oh, that's a punch oh landing right there. Talk about ground he went and lit. pound. And Eugene Jackson is out. Joe Diesel Riggs with a big first-round knockout. Man, that was some heavy hands right there. He landed that first shot, and Eugene Jackson went limp. There's a right hand right there from the stand-up. Man, his legs about crumbled under him, and he just kept attacking him, kept pressure on him. A nice little takedown right there. At this point, Jackson probably welcomes the takedown clear the cobwebs but he was not out of danger there's a nice little transition to an arm bar and if, if joe has it trapped here really nicely but he doesn't get those hips elevated so that's why eugene's able to fight out of that and then joe diesel riggs continued his control of eugene jackson stayed on top of him and started raining the punches down well, right here you see him just laying his leather on him he's throwing his whole body into those punches and Eugene Jackson cannot defend. He's just squirming all over the ground, but he can't get away from Joe. So it was a nice fight for Joe Riggs that time, but he was not so lucky when he ran into the man they call the Grabaca Hitman, coming in at number six at the start of the second round, Riggs against Kazuo Misaki. Riggs trying to get active, trying to get his distance, but again, Misaki's so quick, he, he loves to move around the ring. He's a tough fighter to hit. He very much is, but Joe has landed shots. He hit him with that uh, that uh, left hook when Masaki hit him with that body shot, so he's countering very well. In the exchanges, yeah, he does well, but Masaki's not coming in consistently enough for Joe to get any damage. There it is, oh, right wow. there. Look at that. Uh, there it is right there, see, and that's that's what Masaki's... Oh! oh, what a right hand by Masaki! Riggs in trouble, Masaki, non-stop barrage! Wow. Right back again. I mean, Joe hurt him. And that's going to be it! Josh Rosenthal steps in and stops this fight in the second round. A stunning turnaround. This surprised everyone at the Playboy Mansion, Ken. Well, I, I just thought that uh, Joe had hurt him early on, and then he came back and knocked Joe down. And Joe was defending every one of those punches. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I think you got to let fighters fight in this one. But nonetheless, it was a great punch. He did land it. Good shot. But you know, we're fighters, you gotta let us finish. That was Masaki's first knockout since 2004. Knockout number five comes compliments of a Muay Thai master. Strike force phenom Dwayne Bang Ludwig. Here he is at work, putting the ultimate beat down on Tony the Freak Fricklin. By Bang Ludwig, Rosenthal looking in, the Freak just trying to get one of those punches. Trying monkey roll. He's trying to get out of the way. He's but just he's not. Really defenseless at this stage. He's taking every single shot. Another right hand. Another right hand. Ten. Unblocked. Ludwig putting on a clinic. And there's still 90 seconds left in round two. They're back on their feet somehow. Franklin is barely hanging in there. He's barely hanging in there. That knee stunned him. Tony Fricklin felt the full power of Dwayne Ludwig here, didn't he? Can he say bang, bang, <laughs> bang, bang? Because that's what that fight was, man. He landed a kick right there, and then bang! He was, just, he was landing his punches left and right. And there was a little animosity between these two before this fight. So, you know, he wanted to make sure he put a point uh, on uh, Fricklin's face right there. Exactly what he did. Fricklin in the clinch as we see the sequence one more time. And that really started the whole dominoes falling. And you know, right there, he landed that knee on that cheekbone. And from that point on, Dwayne knew he had him.
The road to MMA was not an easy one for Chicago native Terry Martin, a victim of five gunshot wounds when he was just a teen. He found himself on the losing end of a fight against Corey Devella for two and a half rounds. But in MMA, as we like to say, anything can and usually does happen. At number four, Martin Devella. So far, Corey Devella in the combat shorts has been handing Martin's lunch to him. It has been all Devella so far. Oh, oh and there it is. <laughs> Anything can happen and did. It was wow. not the right, but a sneaky left from Terry Martin that put Corey Devella down, and then Martin finished him off, and Herb Dean stopped the fight. Ken, everybody knew Terry Martin had that potential. He just needed the opening. Well, I tell you, right there, he got the opening when he came with the right hand and then switched up to that left hook, and he landed it right on the button. Right here, you see him come in, fake that right. Right here, you'll fake the right. Boom, and then the left hook, boom, and he landed that right on the button. And from that point on, man, it was over. And you talk about over, man. When he, look at this, he fakes the right hand, boom, he lands that left hook, and then he steps in right here, and he puts an exclamation point on it with that punch right there. And hey, baby, lights out, number four. Already seven knockouts down, and we still have yet to see the best strikers in the business. Still to come, the headhunter makes his way onto the Strike Force countdown.